Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. Um, before I get into my video, um, this is just a quick introduction um, before the clip you're gonna, the little video you're about to, about to see after this. Um, I just wanna give a quick introduction. Um, my name is Stanya. Um, I am a cytologist. I officially became a cytologist March 20th once I passed, when I passed my board, um, March, March 20th. Um, in the video, you're going to hear me say, um, cytotechnologist, um, but officially the name has been changed and we're now called cytologists, but they're still interchangeable. So you still will definitely hear people say cytotechnologist, but the name has officially been changed to cytologist. So I'm officially, that's the name I am, a cytologist. Um, another little disclaimer I want to make is, oh yeah, in the video, I mostly talk about me, i talk about PAPS, but a cytologist does everything. I mean, anywhere you can collect cells, a cytologist can look at the cells, no matter what. So we look at non-GYN and GYN specimens. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I was mostly just talking about um, GYN because in the clip you're about to see, I was getting ready to go into my GYN um, rotation, clinical rotation. But I also had a non-GYN rotation where I went to like a hospital and I got to go on um, different procedures and screen a lot of non-GYN specimens like from the thyroid, body fluid, SCF um, specimens. So anywhere that you could collect cells, a cytologist can look at them. Um, yeah, and then there's a lot of up in the air that people, you know, not in the up in the air, but like people have like, um, talk about like this field of cytology is dying. I don't know really about that. I mean, even before I applied for this program, it was stuff that was saying about that, but I still was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it and, you know, see what happens. Half the time, we never know what half our jobs are going to be like in the future with technology, different type of testing, and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. As of now, all I know is I have a great paying job. Like the field of cytology, as of now, it pays really well. And yeah, so I don't have no complaints. Like right in end, I also got a job like straight well, even before I graduated, I already had a job lined up. Like one of my, the places I went for my clinical rotation already offered me a job. So it's not like I was like struggling to find work either. So I don't know. Um, so I want to put that up in the air, like definitely do your research. Um, if you're interested in this type of field and see what happens, like I said, I don't know what the future holds. Um, this is a master's program, so I do have a bachelor's degree in biology, and I have other lab experience as well in different, as in a molecular lab. I used to be a medical technologist for a molecular, a molecular lab, and I also was a lab technician in a raw and material lab, which was mostly chemistry. So I have other lab experience, so I guess in the future, if something does happen, I can go, hopefully go back to that route, but like I said, you know, we don't know where half our work, our job's gonna be. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, like I said, it's, it's up to everyone to do their research if they're interested in this type of field. But like I said, it's, I definitely wasn't struggling to find a job. I found a job right away and I'm not complaining right now because the pay is good. Um, I've only been in the field for three weeks as of this video. Um, so I'm new and you know, I'm enjoying it for the most part. It's not like crazy, you know, it's tough because you want to make sure you're doing the right thing, making the right diagnosis, but I'm enjoying it. I guess I can make another video in a year to see what happens, <laughs> but right now I'm enjoying it and I guess I'm also enjoying the pay. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's all the little disclaimers I wanted to make, but um, yeah. Let's get into the following clip. And the clip that you're about to see is when I was still in school. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm officially graduated. I passed my boards. Thank God, it was such a struggle. But I'm happy I made it and I'm done. I was just happy I accomplished it, you know, cause school is hard. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Bye-bye. 
Hey YouTube, what's up? Um, how are you guys? I am Stanya. Um, I'm the other twin. Um, my sister, she is the sonographer that does the cardiovascular uh, sonographs. I am a lab person. I love working in the lab. Um, right now I'm getting my master's in cytotechnology. It's a it's a master's, it's called a master's in diagnostic cytopathology. So that is what I'm doing right now. Um, overall, you'll see this video <laughs> if I complete the program because <laughs> this program is so, so hard for me. It's like so tough, but I completed my fall semester and my spring semester and I'm on to my clinical rotation. So that's, you know, that's a very, I didn't even know, if was, I didn't even know I was gonna be making it to my clinical rotations. So this is great. I'm making it to my clinical rotations for the summer. Um, today is May 18th. My clinical rotation officially starts May 31st. So I made it to that. But overall, you'll see this video if I complete the entire program. So I'm like, hey, well, I have something I could talk about. <laughs> but like I said, I'm, I'm going to my clinical rotations. I'm excited for that. Um, I'm just in my classroom right now. No one's here. It's basically um, the end of the spring semester. But right now, I'm just coming. I just came to the classroom to get some practice in um, before I go to my clinical rotations that start in May 31st. Um, but yeah, so right now, um, I'm about to start screening. I'll probably show you guys a little bit what I, what a cytotech does or what I do in this program. Um, so I'm start screening with my microscope. Um, right now the clinical rotation portion is for GYN. It's a GYN, there's a non-GYN and GYN portion. Right now the summer clinical rotations is the GYN portion. So that is basically us doing um, the looking at samples from the cervix. So that's what is the GYN. Um, maybe I'll, I'm gonna go into more detail so you guys can have a better idea what that is. But I might show you guys what some of the slides look like. I might have to be a little bit careful because it's still like HIPAA, um, even though this is like from the school, it still has patient's information on it. So you still have to be careful. But yeah, just to give a little detail, GYN is basically if you're a woman and if you're like over a certain age, you go to your GYN and you get a pap smear and the GYN, um, your gynecologist, she collects a sample from your cervix and she, and she sends that sample to the lab to get processed, do cytal prep, and then I'm the person who screens the slide for basically to see if there are cancerous cells or if it's just a normal pap smear, which is good. We want a normal, we want a normal pap smear. So basically that is what I do. And then I like, I guess you could say I like pre-screen it for the pathologist because it will be a lot of work for a pathologist to screen all these slides by themselves. So say if there's a cancerous slide, we mark them, we mark the slides, and then we send it to the pathologist for farther review so they can get their, give their input and they're the ones that make the, dyna, the final diagnos, um, diagnostics result on whether it's cancerous or maybe we thought maybe we're just overcalling it. Um, some people will overcall, especially if you're new, like who knows when I go, if I like make it through and I start working as a cytotech, I might overcall, you know, my first couple months or so just to be cautious. It happens, but, um, yeah, so this is my first time I'm recording cause I had no time to record do my fall and spring semester. Like I said, I was so stressed out. Plus I was working full time. I had to leave my job. For this program um because it's like it was taking a lot of time and yeah so i'm gonna show you guys a little bit maybe in this video um and another videos i'll add this to the other videos just to give some detail i'll give some detail on what a cytotech if people are interested so yeah stay tuned guys okay guys so i'm just covering up the patient information but these are how some of these slides look Majority of labs um, either use short path or thin prep. I think a lot of um, 
labs in, in the U.S. use thin prep, but this is how a slide looks after it has been prepped and it's ready to screen. So these slides are ready to screen um, for me to screen. Yeah. So yeah, this is how I'm just showing you guys how a slide looks. It's like a monolayer slide, so everything's in a single layer, so it's not, so it shouldn't be, no cells should be um, overlapping. It's just basically a nice monolayer. So monolayer um, slides make things um, easier to screen, unlike conventional. But conventional is still used in some labs, so most programs will make sure you know how to screen conventional slides as well. I'll try to show you guys really quick what a conventional slide looks like, but today I'm just going to be screening the thin prep since that is most likely what I'll be screening screening during my um my clinical rotation. They most I think it's mostly just thin prep. It's not really conventional. Okay, you guys, just really quick, I'm just showing you a comparison. So we have a thin prep, and the other one is a conventional slide. Um, conventional slides are known to be a little bit more difficult to screen. They're both, they're both, they're basically the same. But the thing is with a, a conventional is that you know you can have overcrowding of cells and like dry artifacts. Um, if you ever start this, if you ever get into this type of program and your program shows you conventional, you'll definitely see the difference. So that's why some people prefer, prefer thin prep. And like, like I said, most labs use thin prep nowadays. And the one, the clinical rotation, the lab I'm going to, I believe they use thin prep. But you can just see how the, there's a difference. And then here is my microscope that I, I have been using for my spring and my fall and spring semester it's the leica microscope light microscope um the classroom has different type of microscopes but for me i noticed like once i started using this microscope i'm used to this one um some of the, like some of the other students they have different ones and it's kind of weird some of them have like a blue light and i don't like the blue light i like the i guess this is like a yellow light or um I don't know how to explain it. It's just like once you get used to using one type of microscope, if you might have to switch to another one, it's kind of weird. So hopefully that doesn't affect me that much during clinical rotations because I have no clue what type of microscopes they use or which ones they have. But I guess you just have to adjust um, when you get there. But yeah, this is the microscope, a white microscope that I use. You have to switch for the lights. There we go, I'm gonna start screening right now.